Hi, in this video I'm going to quickly demonstrate how partitioning can improve performance uh, with regard to uh, tables inside SQL Server. Uh, this discussion is mainly a follow-up to a blog that I'm writing where I explain details in terms of how the performance actually improves. Uh, to give you some context, this discussion started off uh, on one of the SQL Server Central forums where someone was asking with regard to their data warehouse if partitioning would actually help. And uh, in this case, I'm going to demonstrate uh, just a like-for-like -like comparison between a table that's not partitioned versus a table that is partitioned, just so that you can understand that uh, all things aside, if you just look at the table itself, how much of a difference partitioning actually makes. So to start off with, what I've got here is I've got two tables. As you can see here, I've got a database called main as well as a database called partition. Both of them have uh, one table each, and the tables themselves don't have any indexes. So we're just looking at the base tables uh, as a heap, basically. So if you just refresh this, you will see that uh, both tables are just uh, standalone heaps. Uh, the only difference between the two tables being that one is partitioned and the other is not. You'll also see that both of them have uh, 8.9 million rows in them. And uh, this partition table, I'll just go ahead and quickly show it to you. If you look at it, it's got uh, many different files. And the partition scheme basically splits the data by age where uh, all the uh, customers with the age equal to 30 are split across multiple files. And uh, we've got other ages as well, but they're all s stored in a separate uh, standalone table. And you'll also notice that here in the main table, I've, uh, main database, I've just got the standard MDF, LDF files and no kind of file organization as such. So keeping this uh, in mind, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and flush the buff buffer pool first and I'll just execute this query. As you can see, this is coming from the main unpartitioned table, which is our standalone heap. So when I execute this, what you'll see is that uh, this particular uh, table at this moment, when you execute it, should take roughly about 22 to 25 seconds. Uh, and we'll run this twice just to validate that uh, that's a consistent result in terms of the performance. And you'll see all I'm really doing is selecting star from the table and filtering for one particular column where it's age. And you can see here that this is uh, 20 seconds. So I'll go ahead, drop the buffer pool one more time and uh, just execute this once again to see uh, what kind of performance we're looking at when we fetch the data from this table. So this is our standalone heap table. As you can see, the table itself looks very much like the fact table of a data warehouse where we've got a number of columns that store many different values. Uh, these values are then later aggregated on. So in the blog, I've also gone ahead and given a comparison in terms of column store index and uh, other uh, indexes as well. So you'll see that we are looking at somewhere around uh, 20 to 23 seconds. Uh, let's just run this one last time to kind of get a consistent result. So uh, we, we can see that it's usually about 20. So let's see if it's closer to 20 or closer to 23 in this iteration. Uh, once this is done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and execute the exact same query on the uh, partition table and let's see how much of uh, improvement in performance we get from it. So that'll give us context in terms of what kind of performance improvement we're looking at. So as you can see here, we're closer to 22, 23. So we'll just take 22 as our average for uh, uh, the unpartitioned heap table as it is. And now we'll go ahead and execute the same query, this time on the table STG day trip, which is inside the partitioned uh, database so you can see that this table is partitioned if I go to storage you can see that uh, there's a partition scheme as well which is using the ref underscore age column so keeping this in mind let's go ahead uh, flush the buffer pool and uh, we'll go ahead and run this query again you'll notice that uh, I've also gone ahead and added uh, a query hint for max degree of parallelism is equal to 4 and this becomes important when I try to explain to you why partitioning actually gives the benefit that it does so we'll just wait for this query to complete first, and then we'll come back and revisit it. So you'll see this query executed in 16 seconds. So that's, uh, as you can see, very easily six seconds of difference between uh, the performance that we got with the table that was uh, a stat standalone heap table. Uh, we'll just go ahead, flush the buffer pool, run this one more time, just to make sure that we're getting consistent results. So we're expecting somewhere in the range of uh, 16 to 17 seconds to fetch data from the table. Now you'll see that there's no indexes, so it's not really anything else other than partitioning that's providing us this particular improvement that we see here. So you'll see again we've got 16 seconds. So as you can see, partitioning is giving us an average of 16 seconds, whereas an unpartitioned standalone table with no indexes is giving us 22. 
So I think at this point it's fairly safe to say that partitioning does give a performance improvement. However, what I'm also saying is that this is not where you would normally stop things. You would also go ahead and continue to add indexes. But if you are under the assumption that partitioning in itself doesn't provide improvement, it is the indexes that actually help look up the information faster, then you can see that's not really the case. In this case, for spe specific instance, what's happening is that uh, we have multiple files placed on the disk. And what you need to understand is that there is a hardware component associated with this in terms of the number of threads being assigned to fetch data from the disk. Each file will be treated like a standalone uh, uh IO of its own. So what the best way to demonstrate that is if you see here I've used max degree of parallelism 4 because I've got 4 CPU cores and because of that I'm using 4 different parallel executions to fetch data from different files um, in parallel which kind of helps the read ahead optimizations of SQL Server when fetching data from the underlying files. Uh, the best way to demonstrate how this works is if I just go ahead and make this a standalone sequential execution, you can see here I'm not selecting the max degree of parallelism anymore and I've just flushed the buffer pool. Now when I execute this you'll see that it gives me the exact same uh, performance as uh, a standalone table on its own. And because uh, in our previous example when I was fetching from the standalone table I did use max degree of parallelism 4 but it was pointless because we still had only one file from which to fetch the data. Whereas here we've got uh, four files, so four parallel threads would actually have saved us the time. And here, now that I'm using a single thread, you can see the time went back up to 24 seconds. So I hope this clarifies to some extent how partitioning actually helps improve performance and uh, how it helps SQL efficiently fetch data. Partitioning doesn't exactly filter data unless you're doing some kind of partition elimination, but in terms of pure I.O., in terms of how it fetches the data from the disk, you can see that partitioning definitely has some advantages that you can leverage. So I hope this makes things clear and uh, thank you for watching.